our call to worship is taken from Psalm 20. In the day of trouble, the Lord will answer you. The Lord will help his anointed. He will answer us from his holy heavens. Some put their trust in chariots and horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Welcome, family and friends. I am the Reverend Dr. Redonia Thomas, pastor of Bethlehem and Laurel Creek. We are one church under one faith, one Lord, and one baptism, serving two congregations in the community of Greenville, South Carolina, where people of every age, race, gender, nationality, and status are welcome. Welcome. Today, friends, you may be wondering why you are the way that you are. Why one tiny thing has impacted your life all these years. Why are you always failing? Or why are you so successful? I believe I have a word from the Lord to give you hope, to encourage and strengthen you on your life journey. So before we get into the word, let us pray. Precious Lord, we thank you for this day, another day that you've given unto us. We thank you for grace and for mercy, O oh God. Lord, we thank you that today we have questions and you have answers. Lord, I ask that you would pour out your anointing on this word, that those with ears to hear will have a heart to receive. And God, that you would break every bondage and every yoke that is holding your people hostage and keep them from doing the things, moving forward, going the places that you're calling us to go, to be, and to do. Lord, I yield myself to you. Pour out your anointing on me that I might preach this word with the power and conviction of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. My friends, I have chosen for a title today, Small Beginnings. But before we get to the word, let me share the text with you. Mark chapter 4, 26 through 34. Mark chapter 4, verses 26 through 34. Hear these words from the Lord. He also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground, night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows. Though he does not know how, all by itself the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. Again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seed on earth. Yet, when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with, with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. With many sim, sim, similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his disciples, he explained everything. Small beginnings. Someone once said, all things have a small beginning. It starts from somebody planting a seed, a seed of love or hatred. It all came from something small. A garden, your education started with a seed. Confidence, faith, all started with a seed planted in your mind. Our business, our birth, all things have a small beginning. Helen M., a ninth grade teacher from 
was, was teaching her class new math years ago. Her students were working hard, but she could tell that they just didn't understand the new concepts. They were frustrated. She was frustrated. And each day, it was more frustration. Then one Friday, after, one Friday afternoon, Helen decided to leave the lesson plan. She had the students to list out each person's name in the class and write something nice about each one. The assignment took the entire class period for them to complete. The next day, on Saturday, Helen took all those papers, compiled a list for each student of what others in the class liked about them. On Monday, she gave each student a paper with what other classmates had written about them. The atmosphere in the class changed instantly. Her students were smiling again. Helen overheard one student whisper, I never knew that I meant anything to anyone. The students were happy with themselves and one another again. It was time to continue with their math lessons and no one ever said anything about those papers again. Years passed. Students came and went. Then the class was suddenly brought together again as young adults, and Helen's former students gathered around her. One of them had something to show her. Opening his wallet, he carefully removed two worn pieces of notebook paper that had obviously been taped and refolded many times. Helen knew without looking that the papers were the ones on which she had listed all the good things of each classmate. She was amazed as another former student told her that she still kept her list in the top drawer of her desk at home. Another had placed his list in the wedding album, his, we his wedding album. Still another classmate took, her, took out her wallet, showed her worn frazzled list to the group and said she carried it with her wherever she went. Helen was simply overwhelmed. Who would have thought that what a teacher did out of desperation on a Friday afternoon would have such a lasting, a lasting effect on her students? You never know. You never know how something you or I might do affect someone else. The funny thing is, that we may not even think that what we did was all that important. But to another person, it made a world of difference. Jesus, Jesus taught us that the kingdom of God is like that. In our text, Jesus describes what the kingdom of God is like. He said, a man scatters seed. The seeds sprout and grow. Jesus planted a seed, what seemed like an insignificant seed, to grow his kingdom. And there has been a change taking place in the lives of God's people up until this very day. It is evident in the fact that there is a church on almost every corner. Evident in the spiritual growth in each of us. It is evident in our love for one another, our community service are growing to be more and more like Jesus. Satan has a kingdom and Jesus has a kingdom. And each one had its small beginnings in the earth. Each one is a work in progress. Each one is seen in the light and the service we give. Which kingdom are you a part of? Which king and kingdom are you serving? Jesus is not giving us a lesson in farming but there are some things about the growth process that you and I need to be clear about. One, growth happens. We use fertilizer, water, sunshine, shade to make things grow, but it cannot be forced. I remember when I could not wait to be 16 years old and then 21, but wanting did not make it come any faster. I could not wait for my children to walk. 
to talk, to get out of diapers, to go to school. I could not make those things come fast enough, but that did not speed up the process. You just cannot force growth. I've heard people say, I wish I had more faith, but growth in faith comes one step at a time. We have daily devotions. We serve others. We pledge money and time to the church. We go to worship and Bible study. These are just some of the small seeds that God uses to mold and shape our lives in Christian growth. Growth is happening even when it's not visible to us. Jesus said, the earth produces of itself. First the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. It is a mystery, my friends. It is a mystery. We still don't know what causes a seed to sprout. No scientists have been able to create a synthetic seed and make it grow. We Growth is a mystery. Our job is to plant seeds. We don't know if the seed we plant will ever take hold, but that should not discourage us. Growth doesn't take place because of our understanding or our manipulations, it is God who makes things grow. When we are growing or trying to make things grow, it is easy for us to lose patience and wonder what's the use. We don't see things, we don't see anything coming from our efforts, so we, we are ready to give up. But wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, my friends. The parable of the growing seed teaches us that just when we are ready to give up, a seed will sprout. Just when we think nothing will happen, growth will take place. We need to be patient and not give up because sometimes growth takes longer than we expect. God works in ways we don't understand, often hidden from our view. And we must be patient. Great things happen with small beginnings. The parable of the mustard seed is a word of encouragement to us. Things might not be what you and I want them to be, but there is still hope. God works in mysterious ways. God is still with us even when we get frustrated because he is the source of growth. Growth often starts out small like a mustard seed and blossoms into something huge. The gospel itself started out small. Bethlehem was a small town. Nazareth was small. Calvary was a tiny spot on the globe. There was nothing particularly significant about the trade of a carpenter or a fisherman or even a tax collector. Yet these are the people who became Jesus' disciples, his followers. These are the people who created the early church and wrote the testimonies in the Bible. The tiny seed planted 2,000 years ago by Jesus and his disciples started out with little promise and little hope. Life is like that, my friends. Who would have thought from 12 disciples, 12 ordinary men, the gospel message would spread to all corners of the globe. Yet you and I are here today because of a small beginning way back then. They planted the seed, God gave the growth. Are there some tiny seeds that you and I could be planting today? Some words of love, some acts of kindness and encouragement. Is there some ministry you and I could be involved in? Even Jesus' message of love and hope, good deeds, realizing that from the tiniest seed, great growth can come. Oh, my friends, let me be clear. God is at work. Seeds have been scattered and growth is taking place each and every day in the lives of people. You cannot always see how it happens or even what causes it to happen. But the Bible tells us that the kingdom of God is advancing. It is growing and just like the mustard seed, it's getting bigger by the minute. 
God's power is working in us and through us. We want to see the church grow. We want to see people's heart change. We want to see less hatred and more love. We want to see righteousness reign, but it starts with a seed. We cannot force it. We cannot control it. We can only trust the process that God is at work making growth happen in the seeds we plant. Oh, my friends, God is in it. Zechariah said, don't despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. We all need to start somewhere, a little here and a little there. Keep planting, keep working, keep watching, keep struggling and striving. God's kingdom is advancing. It is growing where God is working in the tiny seed you and I plant. God is working in you and me, making growth happen all around us. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Let us pray. Dear God, where there are bad seeds planted in my life, send someone to plant good seeds. Where there are good seeds in my life, help me to nourish them. Continue to make them grow. God, help me to plant good seeds in my children, my church, my community, and in my world to grow your kingdom. Amen. Amen. I don't know what your relationship is with God today, but now is a good time to repent. Turn away from a life of sin. Seek God. It is by faith that we are saved. It is a gift from God. Receive it today. God already knows your name. He is waiting for you. So call on him today. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Friends and family, our prayers is that you will be encouraged and strengthened through our ministry. Thank you for your prayers and financial support. May the Lord multiply your gifts back to you. Please share our contact with those looking for ways to increase their faith and their spiritual connection. Check us out on our website, BethlehemGVL.org or LaurelCreekChurch.org. And subscribe to the YouTube channel at Redonia Thomas. Now for a closing prayer. Let us part in the love of God, the grace and the mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit. Let him rest, rule, and abide with us now forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Be safe and remember that the Lord God loves you. May he bless you real good today and keep you until next time.